All right, we now welcome on another special guest it is Paxton Paul McCall of FC Dallas and the U.S. national team. Thanks for coming on today, Paxton. Uh, cheers, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate All right. You. So to start out, we're just going to do some quick hitting questions, just like one or two word answers. We're going to go rapid fire real quick. Are you ready? All right, go ahead. I'm ready. All right. Favorite genre of music? Uh, sad music. <laughs> How many chickens would it take to kill a bear? Uh, 10,000. All right. Toilet paper over or under? Uh, over. Dream dinner guest? Uh, LeBron James. If you were not a footballer, what would you be? Um, a businessman. Are we alone in the universe? Uh, no. Compare your play style to one other footballer. Um, oh, geez. I don't know. I'll come back to you on that one. All right. Uh, would you rather be able to swim like a fish or fly like a bird? Fly like a bird. Best player you've ever played with? Uh, Christian. Is 2-0 actually the most dangerous lead in soccer? No. Uh, all right. And then back to the um, – if or what was it? Uh, I don't even remember. Best player? Um, oh, best player, yeah. The, the, the player that – no, the player that I, I play like? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Maybe like uh, like Aaron Ramsey back in the day. Aaron Ramsey, I love it. Weston McKenney's boy. <laughs> I'm a big Arsenal fan, so I, I love. Oh, yeah. yeah. So do you think if LeBron played soccer, would he be the best like U.S. soccer player? I mean, it's like if he started from day one and grew yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't know. If he was He's a little center, too tall. Yeah, yeah throw him in goal or center back, he'd yeah, be good. He'd be a pretty beast of a center back, but I mean, he's he's athletic as all get out, but I don't know how like agile he is. Like, yeah, just side to side, and soccer's a lot of like twists and turns, and you know what I mean. Yeah, usually big guys like that have that's, that guy's a freak, so he yeah. could probably do it. He could do I, whatever. Honestly, yeah. usually big guys like that have terrible touches, so just throw him in goal, like yeah, right. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing would ever get by him. Yeah, yeah. So right now I know you're rehabbing an injury. How has that yeah. been? How's that been just with the break and everything going on now? Yeah, I mean, timing wise, it was kind of perfect to be able to have surgery and then take the rest of the season. And then obviously starting uh, sometime in early February is my guess for, for preseason. And I'm, I'm basically done with rehab at this point. Um, there's not really anything I, I have left to do accomplish. Um, from a medical standpoint right now, it's more just like volume and uh, on the field, running, working. So I'm, I'm sprinting, cutting today. Even I just got back, took a shower. I was on the field with our fitness coach this morning for like an hour and a half doing a bunch of ball work and fitness and like just getting touches on the ball. Cause I hadn't touched the ball in like four, four and a half months because of, of surgery. So. So was your decision to get surgery when you did, was that, did you have when the MLS season start date would be in mind when you did that? So it would line up well, because you're coming back right in time for the start of the yes season. Yes and no. I think it was just more convenient than anything. I was going to get the surgery regardless because I needed it. Um, and then obviously a nice cherry on top is that it kind of worked out the timeline to be able to start and have a full preseason without any uh, restrictions. Yeah. So you're back with the team now, back at like the facilities? So I'm back at the facilities, uh, me personally, and I'm like allowed to work um, with the medical staff and uh, some of the other people just because I was injured. But like through our CBA, any any player that's like under contract technically isn't allowed to be at the club until the report date for preseason. So like those guys are out doing work on their own without like discretion of the club they're just like we got a plan from our fitness coach and medical staff and they're going and doing that but obviously since i had surgery and i have to go do therapy and stuff like that it's it's a little bit different of a scenario what's johnny been doing he's been staying sharp <laughs> johnny's in ohio now um I, I i assume he's training up there but yeah his whole family lives up there so i don't see why he would come down until uh, the report date yeah you guys live together huh no, so he, him and Callum live together. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Callum Montgomery, and then obviously Callum got traded to uh, to Minnesota. So Johnny and I were gonna live together um, now that they moved out, but just 
I re-signed my lease and it didn't really work out. And but he's over here all the time. I'm over there all the time. And he's probably one of my best friends on the team. So you guys live yeah. close together? Yeah, he's literally like a two minute drive up, okay. up the toilet. Yeah. It's yeah. We had him on like a few months, like two months ago, and he's he's a funny guy. Funny, very yeah. funny guy. No, he's a character for sure. <laughs> so is he's he keeping is he big jokes during the locker room? Yeah, I mean, he, honestly, he's more quiet in the locker room, if anything. Like, just, like around Cal and I, he's, like, super outgoing. And, obviously, if we go, like, out to dinner and stuff, he's super funny, cracks jokes. But in the locker room, he's kind of more reserved, kind of quieter. So, Who is we have like a very the dynamic are? locker room. So, we have a lot of different nationalities and personalities in yeah. the locker room. So. A lot of different ages, too. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I'm like, I'm all, I just turned 21 like a month ago and I'm the third longest player on the team. It's crazy. Wow. <laughs> so you yeah. feel like, do you feel like an older player? Like, I feel like it's kind of crazy to consider somebody that's 21 old, but like. Yes and no. I don't feel like I'm an older player, but I feel like I'm, I know the team very well. I know the club. I know the front office, the coaching staff, every like, kit manager, I, everybody I've been around for, even the, with the academy, like five or six years now. So I, I feel like I, in that aspect of it, I feel like somewhat of a veteran, but obviously I'm still super young. So yeah, not so for you, FC Dallas standards, but right. for the general uh, soccer population around the world, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, FC Dallas is homegrown central. They got so many young players coming through. Uh, yeah. um, speaking of young players, uh, what's his name? Brian Reynolds just made that move over to Juventus, and he's going to go out on loan. We only the, is it confirmed? I I have seen been seeing stuff. It's confirmed, but I honestly ever there was like some little I don't want to call it a scandal, but somebody said it was confirmed when it wasn't. But now I'm seeing more stuff about it again. I'm not, I'm going to wait to say it's confirmed until we see the official tweet from Juventus. I don't but, know whether, I don't know if it's confirmed or not. I know he has a lot of clubs that are interested in him. Um, and I know he's probably going to be gone um, mm -hmm. this like January. So uh, good, good for him. He's an awesome player. Awesome guy. I love him. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know where he's going yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we only got to nor see a little bit I, of nor him. Nor can I say it if I did. Yeah, so. right, 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 right. Yeah, we only saw a little bit of him. We saw like less than a year of him, but you've obviously been around him and you've seen him coming up through the ranks. Just how good of a player is he and can he be? Yeah, no, like it's it's funny because a lot of guys always asked about him because he, he wasn't ever playing or never on the roster. And obviously Reggie was older and a little bit more mature and – um Brian signed like almost three full seasons ago. So he had two real good training seasons under his belt where he got to kind of learn the ropes and figure out how to maneuver the professional lifestyle. And then obviously all of us at the club knew that he was going to do big things and we all expected that of him. But from an outside perspective, you, you didn't really see this coming. I don't think anybody did, but in the club, I, I mean, we all put our faith in him and it's, it's funny because he signed a really big deal right before he even started playing. And everybody was like, whoa, 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 that's crazy. Like, why are we paying this guy so much? And then he turned out to be one of our best players this season. So, Yeah, it's crazy. So what is it about FC Dallas that produces so many great young talents? What about their system? Yeah, I think Oscar kind of solidified a nice uh, foundation for kind of the way we – connect the academy with the first team and um, you never really feel too far away from the first team I know like other organizations some train at different facilities and it's just like there's a big gap between them but I mean growing for the two years I was in the academy like we were one field over training at the same time if they needed a number they would just call us over and we join a session if the starters needed a, a region day and and the subs and reserves needed to to get some heavy minutes on their legs and play 11 v 11 we would go over there and play so i think that aspect of it just being introduced to that kind of competitive uh style and and level of play um definitely helps out and then obviously not all of the homegrowns are from dallas we do a really good job of recruiting from uh markets that don't have mls teams and uh sort of like a Alabama Nick Saban type thing yeah. just like get get players from like Brandon Cervania Alabama Tanner Alabama like Chris Richards Robert, Alabama Ar yeah Chris Richards Alabama Thomas Roberts Arkansas like 
we get a lot of different players from from states that don't have any zoning so then it's it's really easy for them to make the transition because I, obviously it sucks when a guy's from like Houston or something and wants to play for FC Dallas and then Houston has his rights and then it's just it all gets messed up yeah was so that you, your first experience playing with the first team was that like you were training and they needed a extra player and they called you up so when I was on the 16s um, and then I moved to the 18s in the same year, Weston and I kind of um, would train with the first team most of the time. And then we would just play games with the academy. So we were kind of like, we would show up in the morning with the academy and then we would like, both of us would go over and train and then we'd go do weights after and that was a long year and that was before I signed. So like that was January to September is kind of that, that year is when Wes and I were with the first team. And then he left obviously in the summer to go to Schalke. So. When you first joined, you obviously only spent two years in the Academy. Did they mm -hmm. kind of lay out a plan for you and say, we want you, we see you becoming a first team player. This is what you need to do. This is kind of. No, not at all. When I first joined, I was like, with the U15 Academy team. So not even like at real, it was like a pre-Academy team technically. So it wasn't really USDA. It was like, or you, whatever they, you call it, the U16, U18, it wasn't that. It was like the half year that we had. Um, and we had a good squad, but it, and then I played as a DP, like a developmental player for the 16s. Um, and yeah, I wasn't even starting on the 15s when I joined. And then it kind of, the second year when I, uh, was with the 16s and the 18s. And then that was kind of a pretty progressive year for me. I didn't really know for like, I, there was no like thought in my mind that I was just going to come to FC Dallas and then go pro. Like in my mind, I was always college, 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 like get a degree somewhere and try to get a scholarship as much money as I can get. And at what point did you realize that your dream or it was more uh, realistic that you would become a professional? Probably that January uh, that when I said Wes and I started training with with the first team like pretty much every day that's when I dropped out of uh, of my high school I was going to and switched completely to online so I could be on a normal schedule like a normal professional schedule and at that point I was like okay I'm doing this for a reason I'm probably going to end up signing in the next year or two. Mm -hmm. So school is important to you like you said. Absolutely. You're, I mean, I think I read this in an article. It says you're enrolled in Southern New Hampshire. Yeah. So what? I, uh, I did two and a half years of online school of high school. So halfway through sophomore year and then graduated, uh, on a normal time, like with my class and all my friends and then started doing SNHU classes. So now I think with how many credits I have, I think I'm like a sophomore technically, but I'm not like overdoing it and taking mm -hmm. too many classes a semester. I kind of just like take one every eight to 10 weeks and then um, just kind of chill on them. Yeah. So it's adjusting to the online aspect of school probably was not difficult at all for you. Like no, everybody it, else. It, it wasn't too hard, but it sucks. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I'd much rather be in person face to face with the teacher and, and learning that way. But obviously I don't really have a choice. So yeah. I yeah. gotta figure it out. So you said what? you wanted to be a businessman or you would be a businessman if you weren't a soccer Probably, player. Are you getting yeah. your degree in business right now? Uh, no, I'm actually doing sports marketing for now. I'd like to stay somewhat in the realm of sports afterwards, like whether that's like an analyst announcer or work work for a club or even the, a league around the world somewhere. Um, I think that's that would be really cool. But yeah, obviously, if I had no athletic abilities, then I would probably go into business. That's a little yeah. different than what Johnny said. What did he, what was his direct quote, Chuck? Johnny says, we asked Johnny what he would be doing if he wasn't playing soccer. And he's like, I don't know. I'd probably like be, I think this guy said like, I'd be drinking or something like that. Oh, probably. <laughs> He'd be the president of a fraternity. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like announcing, I listened, I watched one of your videos you did with FC Dallas for like the skills challenge. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were taking like the jerseys off I feel like you have like a good like announcer personality I, I'm, I'm quick witted so I think I, I could be able to do it possibly in the future but obviously I have to have a good career with it as well because like you can't just put some schmuck up there that had a horrible career and got taken out when he was 22 from <laughs> surgeries and injuries so I got I got to be playing another 
eight to 10 years of my career to, to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. One day. So I also saw it said you're an ambassador for FC Dallas. What exactly do you do in that as an ambassador for an FC ambassador Dallas? Ambassador for what? FC Dallas. I don't know. That was... <laughs> Where'd you get that? <laughs> I mean, maybe sure, Wikipedia. I'll, I'll but... endorse the club as much as they want me to. But I don't, I'm not like. Don't trust Wikipedia. I'm not actively like an ambassador. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Back I gotta check. look it up now because. Oh yeah, no FC Dallas put this out. It was an article for FC Dallas. It said it was like. Uh, where is this? I don't know. I'll send you the link to the article. All right, send it to me. <laughs> it says I mean, five I, lo- fun- I love the club I play for, but I, I wouldn't call myself yeah. an ambassador. By <laughs> it says, hold on. Yeah, it says, all right, it says, I don't know. It just says, on top of being a professional athlete and ambassador for FC Dallas, Paxson is currently enrolled at Southern New Hampshire. Yeah, I so think I, they just mean that I, like, advocate for yeah, the club. And, like, yeah, yeah, interesting. I, That's a yeah. weird choice of wording. I yeah, might have, I, to to, <laughs> might have to talk to some people over there. Yeah, get it changed. <laughs> or you might have to get a new role. Maybe you should. You could become an ambassador for the club. Get a yeah, lot of perks from it. I get on a payroll or something, then I yeah. might do it. <laughs> yeah. See, maybe we'll just speak it into existence for you. For sure. <laughs> uh, so, go ahead, Chuck. I was gonna say you played in the MLS's back tournament. The, the like the well, we, COVID we one. Didn't play. I wish we could. Oh yeah, you did. Oh well, yeah, but you guys were down there. Like, uh, what was going on during that time? Like, horrible we, man. We got, <laughs> dude. We got shafted. It was bad. Like we, we got down there, and then upon arrival, we had two guys test positive, and then the next morning and night, we didn't have any positive. So we were like, okay, maybe it's just them. We're good to go. So then we trained the next morning, and then like had to pull a guy off the field when we had got the results back because he tested positive. And then we quarantined in our rooms for 14 days straight, couldn't leave. Didn't like some of the guys, excuse me, some of the guys didn't even have balconies. Like we were doing Zoom workouts in the rooms. Like they would knock on our door and leave meals at our front. at our doors. We didn't even like step in the hallways, nothing. So no Disneyland in between. No, Disneyland's in California. Too. Oh, Disney World, Disney World. Sorry. Oh no, I got you. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> no, I wish we could have. But they, like, there were teams going on like golfing outings and fishing trips and stuff like that that the league provided, and we we're just chilling, just doing nothing all day. It was fun though, because I I had a balcony, and it was me, Ryan, and Jimmy, all like right next to each other. So we had some fun out there, and just some nice long talks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So with now going, switching topics, U.S. Mm-hmm. soccer, the national yeah. team. What uh, I know you played in the U twenty World Cup, and a lot, a lot. You were captain. What what was that experience like for you representing the country at a world stage? I was sick. That was like, that's probably the highlight of my career so far. Just being able to go over there and obviously, like you just said, represent not only the team in us soccer, but like on a world stage, that's like your nation, you're playing for your country. So um, that was definitely really cool. And the group of guys we had there are just amazing. We didn't really have anybody that didn't fit into the system or the, you know, the, the scheme that we wanted. And also everybody just had a cool head and we all liked each other. Like we'd be on the bus and not very many people would ever be on their phones. We would all just be talking, interacting, cracking jokes. So yeah. Uh, definitely still friends with pretty much all of those guys and happy to see they're all doing successful things now. And uh, a lot of them will continue to do it in the future. That was a talented team. Yeah. A lot of those guys have made senior national team appearances, including yourself. I'd be interested to see the actual number because who, I mean, a couple of those guys, more than a couple played in that that camp in Wales uh, Mm -hmm. last year. Richie so played, Sebastian played. I know Mark's, I think Mark's made his debut. Richards. Uh, Sam, me, Chris. I mean, there's, uh, I'm, that's just a few, but a lot of guys have made their debuts. Yeah, what's it like to see? I mean, a lot of those guys are now playing in Europe and are, are thriving over there. What's it yeah. like to kind of see them to do that? And does it kind of motivate you 
to come back from this injury and improve yourself again? Yeah, obviously I'm not like, I, I'm a competitor, but at the same time, like I, I love seeing my friends do well. And that's like something that um, I'm not going to like compare them to me and say, Oh, I need to get back because of their success over there. Like, obviously I, I love to see that and I'm their number one supporters, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm getting back healthy for myself and the team and to be able to, to play this year. And, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's awesome to see them doing their thing over there. And, you know, I try to reach out to, to most of them at least like once a month, once every two months, just check in with them, see how they're going. We, we honestly, we have a group chat on Snapchat with uh, just that U20 team. Um, and someone says something every like six, six weeks or so in there and we all get back on and start talking. So it's, it's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So with the camp coming up or the game that's next week, who are some names or players? Like, what are you looking forward to watching in that? Yeah, I, I need to uh, look at all all the guys that are at camp. Obviously, I'm looking forward to seeing the three guys we we brought to camp. Um, see Brian make his debut hopefully, and then and then Tanner as well. And Jesus made his debut last year and and played really well in that game. But um, those two guys are younger, and I think that they hopefully they're doing well. I talked to Tanner a little bit a few days ago, but I need to reach back out and see how they're doing. But I think they're going to send a few guys home from the 23. So after that, then I'll figure out who's going to be on the roster and then hmm. kind of support the other five. Yeah. And also there's a couple guys from Dallas that are over at Bayern right now. Yeah, training. Six of them. Six of them. Wow. Quarantine. Interesting. So what is kind of, have you talked to them at all since they've made it over there and kind of checked in on them and seen how they're doing and what it's, what the atmosphere is like? Yeah, well, they uh, they had to quarantine when they got there, uh, just for whatever COVID protocols with Germany and for Bayern. Um, so I think they just got out of uh, quarantine today. Um, so I assume they trained this morning, maybe. Um, so I'll, me and Brandon Cervania are super close, so I'll probably Facetime here him here in a little bit and see how it went. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Bayern just lost yesterday to Holstein yeah. Kiel. Yeah. Crazy That's penalties. Right. Yeah. That is crazy. Wow. <laughs> um, so we talk about all these guys that are over playing in Europe as a goal of yours, I'm assuming is to make it over to Europe. Uh, how, do you give yourself some sort of like a timeline on when you hope to, to transfer over or is kind of the main thing for you to just be healthy and get back into a rhythm? Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, I can't make any transfers before I'm like healthy. Like if, if I only, play half a season like teams over there aren't going to want me so definitely priority is to get a full full season and uh, obviously you know you can't help little acute muscle injuries here and there that you're out for a week or two but I'm talking like no major surgery injury um, for a full season where I I miss like more than four or five games mm -hmm. and then we'll and then obviously we'll see I'm a I'm a person that lives in the present so if if it comes down to it and uh, that opportunity presents itself in the future, then that's a decision I'll make then. But obviously it's got to be the right timing, right team, right case scenario. And uh, then we'll figure it out from there. What, so, I mean, obviously like an injury and getting surgery, it's tough, like obviously physically, but mentally as well. Yeah. What, what are you doing to like stay mentally like positive and just mentally strong and focused during the time? I think just leaning on my family a little bit. Um, Naturally, I'm, I'm not really like the type to get upset about much. I understand that like shit happens and you have to adapt to it no matter what. So I, I wasn't too, uh, obviously I'm upset about the injury that I, I couldn't play, but at the end of the day, it's what I needed to get. And I, I wouldn't have been able to play otherwise. So I kind of look at that and I'm like, okay, well now my next way to, to do my best for the team is to just crush rehab and get back as fast as possible. So mentally I've been, I've been good throughout the whole process. I know a lot of guys in, uh, coaches throughout the club have have checked up on me on a regular basis and I think they know for themselves as well that I'm I'm doing okay mentally and obviously with COVID it's hard to like hang out with too many friends but when I can I, they're back from college so I'll hang out with a few people here or there or like um, obviously since we're not seeing anybody from the club then it's not like a risk as much and then go home for Christmas and hang out with my family and then for New Year's and spend time with time with my brothers and parents and that kind of gets my head away from it so mm -hmm. do your brothers play 
Yeah, my my older brother played uh, for Columbia. Okay. So he graduated, and then uh, my little brother's a senior in high school, and hopefully he plays somewhere uh, next year. Does he, so he play for, for your team? Okay. That's the Premier team. Nice. So not the academy, but the one right below. Yeah. So. I gotcha. Cool. Uh, so we got some fan questions. We put out a little thing to get some fan questions. We'll okay. go through some of these right now. All right. Uh, first one is from Tootsies. <laughs> and the question is, what's your favorite league of soccer to watch? The Prem, Premier League. Prem. You have a favorite team? Arsenal. Oh, yeah, you said Arsenal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not that uh, – <laughs> not a great time to be supporting them, but – uh, uh, I can't can't switch my roots. So they've been playing pretty well recently. Yeah, well, I, the past service. month, yeah, yeah. But before that, they dug themselves a hole. I know a massive hole. That's a trench. <laughs> the next is from Kurt Viles guitar. He says, "What are your feelings about playing on the wing, and which senior midfielders do you learn the most from?" I don't know if that's U.S. Men's National Team or Dallas. I'll say both. Um. So, what are my opinions about playing on the wing? Uh, I I don't mind it. Um, I. I, part of my game is being versatile. And so to be able to play on the wing or in the middle or just where, wherever Lucci needs me or the national team wants to put me, then that's my role for that, that team. But uh, I enjoy playing on the wing. It's a different uh, dynamic and you have to switch your mindset a little bit than being in the middle because you're not involved in every play is the best way I can say it. And in the midfield, you have to react no matter what. And you can't just like take any breaks, but on the wing, you can like, take a little break when the ball is on the other side or just like switch off maybe a little bit more than you can in the midfield. And then I love, so Tyler Adams, I love the way he, he plays. And obviously that's a good friend of mine as well. And um, he's doing great things over in Germany. So uh, he's definitely some, somebody that I, I love to watch and love to see his energy. Hmm. Next one's from clutchy 42. What was your album of the year for 2020? Oh, album of the year for 2020? I'm not, I don't really listen to albums. I mean, I guess. But let's say, let's, let's say artist. artist. Yeah, let's artist. artist. Oh, my favorite artist is James Bay. If you know who that is. He's no. kind of a sad singer. Is he? Yeah. Sad boy. Uh -huh. let, me, let me find a uh, fine line. Harry Styles, money. <laughs> Great album. That was, that's probably the one I would say. Okay, and this is from Tinfoil Robot Profit. What a name. Since FC Dallas is so well known for its youth development, what advice would you give to junior players for success in their system coming through the ranks? I think just the best advice I always give to younger guys and younger players is just time and like spend time on a ball, spend time around the game with your siblings outside in the backyard, whatever you're doing, put it passing against the wall, like the more time you spend on the ball, the better you're going to be regardless of, even if it's just like walking around the house with the ball at your foot, like the more time you put into it, the better you're going to be. And, and I'm a big uh, advocate of the, the 10,000 hours rule. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I've, I've definitely hit 10,000 hours, but for you to be like a master at something, I think that's super important. Yeah, definitely. For sure. All right, Paxton. I think we're going to wrap it up now. Thanks for cool. joining the podcast today. And we're looking forward to watching you recover and hopefully successful 2021 season for you. Yeah. Glad you guys uh, got in contact with me finally. Sorry it took so long. That's uh, all right. It's all good. Glad we made it happen. Having me on. 100%.